Welcome back. It's time to talk Ahsoka Episode 7. Hey, this is Will with the Force with Friends podcast and my friend Kevin. And this week we are discussing Ahsoka Episode 7. I thought it was a very fun episode, personally. I know there's been a little bit of back and forth between Star Wars fans about it being, you know, filler or kind of a wasted episode. I personally didn't feel that way. Um, I know you and I texted and you might have leaned a little more that way, but I think I might be talking you into loving this episode, maybe. So let's go ahead and hop right in. We're starting off our episode seven with our scores one minute in so give me a score for episode seven on a scale of one to ten yeah you 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 definitely talked my score up um <laughs> I, you know the more i thought about it the more i liked it because it was a fun episode mm-hmm. i think my hang up was uh they introduced so many interesting things that didn't get pushed at all this this episode so my, my score did go up though because as we talked and you kept bringing up all the kind of fun things that happened in the episode <laughs> I, I think i'm settling on a 7.58 Okay. Um, but just because there's still a few little things that really just kind of nagged me in the episode. But but again, it was fun. Like the, the bottom line is it was a fun episode to watch. So I think I probably had it at a nine before talking to you. You might have scaled mine down a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to go we met in the middle. <laughs> yeah, we did. So I'm going to go eight, eight, five. I thought the action like the last episode didn't have a ton of action. So this yeah. one having more, I think, really got me going with like my ADHD and all that with without being able to focus a super long time. Last week was was yeah. a lot, even though I loved it. So I'm going to say eight and a half because we did get story elements that I enjoyed seeing. You know, we hear the Mandalore deal with Grant or with Moff Gideon happen. So yeah. Carson Tiva just slides that in there like in three seconds and we go, oh, OK, timeline. We know we're after little things like that. I was a big fan of the thing with Palpatine where uh, Ezra says, oh, he's dead. And Sabine goes, oh, that's what they say. That's what they're saying. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. So <laughs> that just I mean, they added in some pretty big lore yeah. items in, just in passing. So I thought that was cool. And then action from from start to finish. So I'll give it an eight five. I was a big fan. Having real, said that, though, nothing consequential happened in this episode. <laughs> I don't think in the yeah. big picture. So I get what you were saying, too. Yeah. And and too, we talked about last week how the pacing was just kind of off. Like they they rushed some things. So yeah. If, if this one was going to be a little bit lighter on story, I'm not sure maybe why they couldn't have balanced it out a little bit. But again, those are such tiny complaints because right. it, it was it was still a lot of fun to watch, which yeah. is ultimately what we're here for. So. For sure. And so we have officially not had the complaint section in a video for at least a few weeks. What, episode four? I think I complained yeah. about Sabine Wren, like yeah. not destroying the map. So we're going on three straight weeks of no complaint section. So yeah, pretty, pretty small nitpicks <laughs> is, is really all that's come up. We enjoy Ahsoka. <laughs> yes, safe to say. So per the usual, we're going to do a quick episode review. Then we're going to run through all of our topics real quick for an episode review. We start off with the New Republic. Hera's finally standing trial for this little mission that she's undertaken with Carson yeah. Tiva. You know, she gets off the hook from that. C-3PO saves her with, with Leia supporting the mission of all people. We go to Ahsoka and Hu Yang and they're in the Pergil mouth and it turns out there's a minefield. So they have to navigate through that. Then at some point Thrawn sends ships after him because the Night Witches find her and she navigates through all that. Eventually Force connects with Sabine. That's how she learns where Sabine is, like Empire Strikes Back style. All the while this is happening we see Balin and Shin they have a little bit of a breakup sort of not really but yeah. sort of it's weird yeah it's, it's, it's interesting com- well, complicated yeah. right it's complicated <laughs> yeah, for sure so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that happens. So Shin takes those mercenaries out and they they chase the poor turtle people and Ezra and Sabine. <laughs> Essentially, the rest of the episode is like action, them fighting them off. And, and ultimately, the good yep. guys win on paper. But yeah. really, we hear from Thrawn that he's essentially just buying time with all this. Yeah. So really, Thrawn, per the usual, is a step or two ahead. And he 
seems in this episode to have won the war, even though maybe they lost the battle. That's the episode we end with poor Ezra, like still thinking he's going to get to go home and all the heroes are together. Someone's yeah. got to tell him at some point he ain't going home. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I'm going to be honest. That was one of the things that annoyed me is this poor guy, like somebody tell him that nobody has an escape plan. Like, yeah, because it literally ends on that, that line of him. I have a good feeling about going home. Like why? What, why wouldn't have that good of a feeling about it. <laughs> What is giving you this good feeling? Unless he's got a uh, purgle so, to talk to. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, yeah, that was the episode. We're going to kind of break it down chronologically, but odds are the way we talk, we will hop all over the place. We're going to run through very quickly all of our topics. So we've got the New Republic. We have the Anakin hologram. We have Sabine being force sensitive. We have all the action for the episode. We have Balin's skull. I think there's still a lot of interesting stuff to talk about with him. Yeah. And then per yeah. the usual, our episode eight predictions. The New Republic, this scene is the one that we've been waiting for for quite some time. There is that one senator, there's a whole panel of senators and I guess other New Republic people on Coruscant. Yeah. And that one guy is so annoying. He's <laughs> the dad of the character in... What resistance or something like that? What is that show? Oh yeah, I've never uh, seen it. It's animated. Seen it. Star Wars Resistance. Yeah, it's the, the only pilots. Star Wars thing that I have never seen. Like yeah. our our dogs watch uh, Young Jedi or something when we're gone from home. So like you know <laughs> that comes on after Bluey. We do know Young Jedi. The Resistance show is the only Star Wars I have no clue about. But apparently he's the dad of a character in it. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't realize that. I've seen parts of it. But I have I have not taken the time to watch it. So yeah, and I'm probably not going to put it on my list sometime. Yeah, it's probably not going to make my list, especially if I know that that guy's <laughs> kids in it. I mean, yeah. he is he's the <laughs> absolute worst. I mean, and I he get is. it. That's his character. He would be a perfect wrestling heel, just making you so yeah. mad every step of the way. I almost think he's an imp if I didn't know that he stays in the New Republic in the First Order, like blows him to smithereens one day. He kind of gets what's coming to him in a few years, yeah, but it's interesting fair. to see. He's like completely dismissive. Hera's like, no, it, it's a real threat. Mon Mothma is almost handcuffed by democracy. If <laughs> It yeah. seems that way. Luckily, C-3PO shows up and saves the day with that message from Leia. So yeah. what did you think about this scene? I think if the goal is to make you completely hate the New Republic... <laughs> Uh, it was the perfect scene, right? He's like, the guy. That guy. He, he <laughs> is. And it, it really made me think of like, it, it really echoes back to like New Republic's kind of starting to look like the old Republic now, right? Yeah, like it made me yeah. think about Padme before the Senate and her rousing speech. And then all the bureaucracy and crap comes into play and it just blows it up, right? And so here's this guy, his world isn't shaken, like he has no concerns. And so he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to, to, to rock the boat. And so it made me think kind of back to the old Republic and just, you know, there's there's no difference, right? They're still dysfunctional. It's it's a it's a hot mess. Yeah, and then three PO comes in and saves the day, which I'm assuming was just a, a cheaper cameo, maybe. Yeah, um, you don't have to deep fake him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that that was fun though to see him, and I thought that was that was a fun kind of lighthearted moment at the end of that in the exchange with uh, Hera and Mon Mothma. So yeah, um, no, I thought if if the purpose was it to really solidify how completely and utterly useless the New <laughs> Republic is, they they nailed it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing their due diligence and making us hate them. So that way, when Thrawn shows up next season and just starts picking them off, maybe no. we don't care. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. What did you think about Chopper? Ready to, you know, throw some fists there. Yeah, he, when... didn't, he didn't like the droid <laughs> insult, did he? <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to commit a war crime. Time you get to see Chopper is a fun time. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love I'd love to get some more of him in the future. We've probably talked about that scene longer than it actually lasted, but I thought in the few minutes they did perfect. I loved it, yeah. and I, which I've been predicting this scene for like two or three episodes yeah. now. So I, I've really been ready for this. And so we finally get it. C-3PO shows up. I'm almost convinced that we've spent so much money deep faking or de-aging Hayden Christensen. That's why we can't have Leia or Zeb <laughs> because all the budget went to making all 50. All the CG budget. <laughs> 
Yeah, we had to make fifty-year-old Hayden look like he's twenty uh, again. So, so yeah, I think I think that's where Which that's I'd say gone. is worth it. I'll I'll take it. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. He's he's definitely worth it. So anything yeah. else on the New Republic? No, I I think I think it just sets up. We'll get into predictions later about whether yeah. Thrawn's going to make it back. But I I do think it sets up for how unprepared they're going to be when when and if things go down. Right. It, yeah. It, they're they're not going to be ready for <laughs> for something to happen. I, I I'll tell you one thing. I just now thought of like right right out of nowhere is it wouldn't shock me the way Star Wars works in storytelling if this guy mm-hmm. that we all hate turns out to be in like the biggest advocate fighting against Thrawn as we move forward because they're putting he may just be the guy that like makes you hate the New Republic, but it would be yeah. so Star Wars to see him almost doing about face as we move yeah. through whatever this story is. Just random thought, though. Yeah. Well, and another random thought. He's so adamant about denying that the Imperial Remnant exists. Maybe he's also a spy, right? Maybe yeah. he's maybe he's a plant. I don't know. Yeah, I think or maybe a, he's just going to be nobody. So he's a, he's an imp. <laughs> That's true. That would be very Star Wars too if he was just nobody. Be, so everybody we'll gets to be a nobody except Ray. She's a somebody. So yeah. or Maroc. He's a nobody. So. <laughs> M- moving forward we have this anakin skywalker yeah. hologram so again we get like a minute of hayden christensen as anakin training ahsoka we learn that there's like 20 of these holograms that ahsoka has and he would record them for her and it was the last bit of lines we hadn't heard from the trailer is what that was yeah and i i love how he's playing kind of like this version of Anakin that we've really only seen within the uh, within the animated stuff. So it was really cool. You know, we talked about it, her comment about all the recordings that he'd made. It, it's it's really interesting to see like he he kind of had a feeling she'd be on her own at some point. Right. And he's talking mm-hmm. about it and he's he's left her all these things to continue to help her master you know, her craft even after he's gone. So it was it was just a cool little nuanced aspect of him that they kind of added that he had prepared for her to be alone and recorded yeah. this stuff. So it was, it was really cool. Uh, I liked it. He's done his homework on Matt yeah. Lanter's Clone yeah. Wars Anakin. I mean, yeah, he he's done a great nails job. the mannerisms. I mean, he's got the character down. He is Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. But like you said, there was an aspect of Anakin that he doesn't know. And I'm pretty confident he has watched quite a bit of Clone Wars now, at least clips here and there to know how he should be reacting and, and carrying himself. And I think that's just a very nice touch to what Hayden has committed to this, plus what Dave, you know, Dave knows everything at this point. So the way he can make these characters work, it's awesome to see. And he had one of the uh, one of the good one liners from the show. There were some good ones in this one, but kind of the whole more than I uh, did. Don't don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> just as long as you do it more than me. Right. Do, yeah. Like what do <laughs> your training I say not as I do. <laughs> More than I do. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. He he really did capture because that's a very Clone Wars Anakin thing to yeah. say. Not necessarily yeah. the the prequels. I don't know if George could have written that line. I don't know if he could have mustered it up. So. <laughs> Very much a Clone Wars George line. Yeah, yeah, he he he's more into writing Naboo romance or something like that. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh man, that'd be an interesting podcast. Break down that the dialogue in that scene. Hey, once Ahsoka's <laughs> over, we're gonna break down the so dialogue. Painful. Yeah, we should make our wives sit uh, in and listen to it. <laughs> there you go. That's a good idea. See that if there's still our wives after it. <laughs> So that was an awesome scene when he mentions Asajj Ventress. I thought that was very cool because he could just say Grievous and Dooku and we're like, oh, we've seen them before. It was fan service to throw her in there, but it does throw in a little more weight to the Clone Wars. Like, oh, yeah, she was one of the big three bad guys in the Clone Wars. And we are recognizing that in live action. So I thought that was nice. Well, it's cool, too. If you think about it, she's listening to a recording, right, that he prepared for her to fight against things other than just like foot soldiers, right? So yep. she's she is kind of prepping to I mean, she knows what she's kind of walking into. So it's just, again, just little nuanced things like that. Just like specifically, what is she listening to and what is that training for? Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I would like to get to see more of those clips. We probably yeah. won't, but no. <laughs> they threw it out there. It would be awesome. Anything yep. else on Force Ghost, Anakin, or not Force Ghost, that's episode eight, Anakin Hologram? <laughs> You're already throwing <laughs> predictions. Uh, yeah, no, I, again, that was a short scene, but it was yeah. still, it added a lot to the, just, just the moment for Ahsoka, so. So, Sabine Force Sensitivity, this was like my biggest complaint yeah. going into the show, was like, why does she need to be Force Sensitive? I don't get it. And obviously, she has proven she is not throughout 
the series yeah. like you know she makes bad decisions left and right but i think this is okay how they're going about this ahsoka says no i think i know how to find her and so she does that little telepathy thing that we see luke and vader they do it in episode five but luke and leia yeah. also and do leia. it in yeah. empire strikes back i think we see it twice right because it's he talks to leia when he's dangling from yeah. from cloud city but then he talks to yeah. vader when he's on the ship, uh, yeah, like the yeah. medical ship. Once he's in the med bay, yeah. Yeah, so we see it there. And as far as I know, that's the only time we see living beings doing that throughout the rest of the movies, as far as I can recall. Gosh, yeah. I'd have we to see Force Ghosts doing about it. That. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great question. I'm going to have to think about that now. <laughs> so I thought it was cool. And it, I don't think it's unbelievable that that would work. I mean, obviously, yeah. Leia is the daughter of Anakin. So she's she's got the force. She just doesn't know it yet. But 1000% untrained and Luke is able to connect with yeah. her. So I don't think it's far fetched that Ahsoka could connect with Sabine that way. I thought this was a nice way of, yeah. hey, we're making a little progress. Yeah. And one of the other things I thought about, too, is, you know, this is obviously the home of the Night Sisters. And so it makes you wonder if this place is just inherently stronger in the force as well. And just That's true. Made, yeah. it, made it a little easier to communicate. I mean, again, there's a lot about this planet we don't know, which may be part of what's bugging me. Like, I, I, need, I need to know about where we are and what's going on here. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it didn't bother me. I, I thought it made sense for the story and it, it didn't come out of left field or anything. Yeah, it was good. And it wasn't all these corny times where she like puts her hand out and you think something's yeah. going to happen. I would be very frustrated if like all of a sudden she lifts yeah. rocks, you know, or yeah, something no, I'm like glad that. It wasn't something like that that happened for sure. Yeah, that, that I thought this was a little more intimate of a way to get into the force, if that makes sense. Yes. And uh, a, another one of my favorite lines was in that scene where she's telling Ezra Sabine took her on as an apprentice and his initial reaction is why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that cra- that was a very Ezra thing to say, right? Foot in his mouth yeah, immediately. That's what I was wondering to too. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Uh, that whole scene was good. Yeah. Now we don't have this in our agenda, but I think this is a great spot to just throw it in there. Is this actor is doing an amazing yeah. job with Ezra? I'm sure they probably yeah, told yeah. him he had to watch <laughs> Rebels as well, and he has just captured Ezra Bridger to a T. And the and the writing's been on point for him too, right? Just the yeah. little comments. The we'll get into it with the action, but just kind of the cockiness, the a little bit of the bravado. Yeah. Um, he was always. He was always kind of that way. So I, I I agree. I think he's really been spot on with his portrayal of Ezra. Yeah, I have loved it. And he, I mean, he's been in the show seven, eight minutes or something like yep. that. I mean, That's just de- dedicated time to him. And it seems as if it's been enough just, just seeing it. So yeah, they're doing a great job. Now with Sabine being force sensitive, I think we may see a little bit more of that in episode eight, but I don't, I won't say that's like a prediction or anything. I, I don't know concrete what may happen, but it does make me think, okay, the door's open. So maybe we start kicking it down a little bit more as we go through. And I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if we don't see her maybe able to like move the cup or something like that yeah. from kind of the callback from earlier in the season. It, it wouldn't shock me since we've already opened that door now. Yeah, because kind of get starting to get a little bit into the action but like her fighting all the fighting she's been doing has been very mandalorian right it's like it's almost kind of like she's given up a little bit on trying to adjust how she fights and what she does yeah and so i do wonder if this this will be like a like a moment of like okay well maybe maybe i can focus on this maybe this is something i can progress in because it kind of seems like she had given up on it a little bit so i wonder if that'll be like a clicking point for her that she's finally kind of had this experience with the force so yeah that'll we'll be see. interesting to see now we will go ahead and transition into the action because that's like or the rest of the episode Sorry, essentially. I keep jumping ahead. <laughs> no, that was good. I didn't have anything else to say. But with with the action, I think watching Sabine and Ezra fight, I I picked up on that as well, where she's doing all that essentially Mandalorian combat with a lightsaber. And yeah. it may be my favorite combat that we've seen in Ahsoka outside of when, you know, Anakin and Ahsoka are dueling in the world between worlds. That's in its own level. But yeah. watching Sabine, like she shoots the wrist rockets, she uses the grapple hook, she has her blasters, flamethrower, flamethrower uses her yeah. saber. It's so cool to see it. And when we watch Din Djarin with the dark saber, it's not the same because he's not very good with it. Yeah. But she's very good with the lightsaber. Yeah. So it's almost as if what we could see the Mandalorian do if he actually 
actually figures out what he's doing. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like it, it's a lot of fun to watch her fight because she does balance those things really well. And I, I mentioned it before. I love watching her move from shooting to Mandalorian tools to the lightsaber to yeah, you know the the best guard deflections and all that stuff. It's 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 really fun to watch her fight right now. I'd, I'd say it she's is. probably one of the more interesting. Just watching the fight scenes that's yeah. the most fun. To watch. Now, did you pick up on this? This this is Star Wars action. If you could have a definition of it, this episode okay. was it. So we have the space battle because all great Star Wars battles, you have a space battle. You have yeah. a battle in the air on the planet and you have a ground battle. And we had all we three, had all three. in true. one episode. So we had the space battle, very short lived. And then the classic go hide in the asteroids, go hide yeah. in the ring. That's a very yeah. Star Wars thing that as well. Was. Yeah. So sure. she does that. Then we have Hu Yang piloting from the air. That was very good. We have lightsaber fights on the ground. I think that may be subliminally why I liked it so much. It was, it was very much Star Wars. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that today and that was one of the things that as I thought about it I was like you know this was a pretty good episode because it, it, even though it didn't push along some of the things I may have wanted it was it was very Star Wars in its humor and yeah. its action it was and, and as the more I thought about it through that lens the more I, I did like the episode so yeah there there was I nothing too that. deep to it and honestly if you look at the original trilogy outside of a few aspects there's really nothing too deep there either i mean you get some deep yeah. things sprinkled in here and there but it's yeah. it's a lot of it's fun and action too and so i think yeah. that's what we got here really enjoyed it what did you think about the turtle people their little uh, their little <laughs> defense mechanism yeah. but they would pop out every now and then and throw a rock or shoot yeah. a sling the the naughty is that what they're called i Something don't like that. i don't know i like that you i think the first time you called them turtle turtle jawas i think that was my yeah. favorite description yeah. so <laughs> that's what they yeah. are no they're they're funny um the interactions between them and ezra are funny it, it was interesting to see them kind of moving along in their homes and then you know i wasn't sure uh, sorry this is a random side complaint but i wasn't really sure where they were going like uh, they're just kind of yeah. driving along like pretty leisurely like not yeah. really not really much of a rush to get anywhere. So I wasn't really sure what the deal was with that. But no, I I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought Ezra, part of me is a little disappointed we didn't get to see him with a lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because I think it was Rebel season three, like the, the one where he first cuts his hair. Mm. And he, uh, like you see this really cool scene where he kind of shows off what he can do as a Jedi. So I was a little disappointed. But I still like that he's very cocky, right? Like he's like, no, I don't need the lightsaber. You keep it. I'm good. It's it's a very Ezra thing to kind of say, like, you might need it, but I don't kind of a kind of a play on it. So um, I have an episode eight prediction we'll get to on him oh, and the lightsaber later. So don't let me forget that. I was, I'm curious what you're going to say. I wonder probably if the same as yours. Too. Yeah, maybe so. Probably the same. Um, but no, yeah. I, I thought it was fun, though. I mean, he he's obviously pretty well mastered fighting without a lightsaber. And he was I mean, he was yeah. fairly untouchable except for getting hit with that random horse push but yeah yeah two other parts of action we'll talk about the fight with shin first and then we'll move into the fight between balin and ahsoka because we will transition into balin yeah. so the shin fight it was really cool you kind of see the episode nine where ray and kylo ren would use the force to block each other when they're yeah. swinging on the death star i thought it was cool to incorporate that here because it would be odd if they were the first two to incorporate that i like yeah. to see that ezra is as strong enough and confident enough in the force to use it to stop a lightsaber blow things like that he he obviously knows martial arts which was cool to see yeah it was impressive because i mean we see ahsoka do it a little bit with her one hand but also her lightsaber but i mean he just like two hand stops that thing completely yeah, he's double, so yeah. that was that was pretty impressive and he was but, doing i mean he was slinging the stormtroopers with both hands yeah. it was good yep and you see uh, some of his more you know, in rebel side where he grabs the blaster and kind of uses that. But I, you know, I thought his fight versus Shin, I, you know, it felt like he was just not really the aggressor, right? I felt like he was just kind of playing with her. I don't, it didn't, didn't ever really feel like he was in trouble with her. So no. it'll be interesting to see how that plays out coming soon with how he handles, uh, possibly fighting some other people. So Yeah, episode eight is going to be interesting. I yeah. think there's a lot of action to be had. I think I could yeah. be completely wrong. It's, it's hard to know. Yeah. Now, so. the the battle or the duel with with Balin and Ahsoka, he won that battle. Technically, like, as far as the fight goes, I mean, Ahsoka was never going to disarm him or anything, but I don't know that she was really trying at the same time or if yeah. she was just buying time. I, I can't really gather what I've 
can make of that or if she just realized, you know, she was going to have a diversion coming in. I just I don't know that I'm a huge fan of these new lightsabers that they've used since the sequels. It just seems almost like they're playing with an expensive toy that they've CGI'd because it's not the same like as when Hayden and Ewan are hitting each other with those metal yeah. or the wooden sabers. Yeah. It just doesn't come out exactly the same. I understand it's a lot easier to do, but yeah. for whatever reason, I think this battle in particular did not look as cool as when they fought on the planet they fought on previously. Yeah, it was a lot it was a lot shorter of a fight. And it was mm-hmm. just kind of a lot of lightsabers kind of glancing off each other, right? There yeah. you never really felt like they were getting into it because you're right though i think ahsoka is just trying to get past him right yeah. i don't i don't think she's looking to really engage and good gosh balin i don't i don't what know what he's doing right because <laughs> yeah. it seems like he stops her right to impede her progress but then doesn't even bother to follow her right he's just like oh well yeah. i'm not here for this anyways <laughs> yeah so it's Gosh, he's he's a fashion fascinating character. Yeah, let's go uh, ahead and dive in on him because we've we've got a few minutes left and I just the more we hear from him, I don't feel like I'm any closer to figuring him out than I was six episodes ago. I think I'm starting to feel like he's had a much bigger long game at play here even from the very beginning, right? I think he's been along mm-hmm. with this stuff. I mean, the fact that he just all of us like, because it looks like it throws Shen off guard too. When he's all of a sudden, it's yeah, like, completely. Hey, I'm gone and you're going to go back with Thrawn. It's, you know, he's like, it's clear you want power, right? That's what you want. That's what you're after. Go get it. Which we've talked about, right? Definitely yeah. points to her, her kind of being a little bit on the darker side of things. Uh-huh. But she looks at him. She's like, you know, are you serious? I mean, she doesn't argue. She doesn't. She doesn't yeah. contest with him, but you can tell it throws her off. And I'm really curious what this does to her relationship with him now, especially that she's been beaten, right? And has to turn tail and run. You got to wonder if she she partly blames Balin for that. And so yeah, their, their relationships just kind of, it seems like it's falling apart. And it's all because of whatever this thing is, right? That he that he feels like he has to pursue. So I, I'm very fascinated by it. And that's one of the things I wanted to know more about because he made that comment last episode and we got nothing on it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if we're going to get anything on it next episode. That's what so. I'm thinking. I mean, I'm, I'm in, I think there's one of two things that can happen to him. He's yeah. either going to die in the next episode, like protecting Shin or he's sick of Thrawn or something, but I don't know that he's that invested so I'm not sure if that's really going to be the the path or he's just going to go MIA like hey I'm I'm here all y'all are leaving and I'm fine with that I'm going to figure out what this thing that's calling to me is and that's just kind of all we see of Balin's skull like he just he's going to be tracking this down and everybody else leaves I have no clue I just I would like to think I know what he wants but until we know what that greater threat is or the greater thing calling to him, I think we're just kind of stuck there. On a slightly wilder theory note. Okay, let's hear I it. I think I mentioned this to you. Like, especially now that there's kind of this wedge driving between them, I, you know, I do wonder if Shen taking the Sith route decides, well, he's obviously on to something, right? So maybe I'll just take him out and get this, whatever this power is that he's, <laughs> he's after. So yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily see that happening, but I, I'm just really interested in the way their relationship has fallen apart and what that could potentially mean. So I'm, he is just so interesting. I don't have anything yeah. else to say. So let's try to guess what we think is going to happen next week. So oh, you want to go first or you want me to? Done, Matt. You go ahead and go first. I'll collect okay. my thoughts. I got a couple <laughs> things, probably a lot of layers deep on this. There's going to be some kind. Well, it could go either way. Either there's going to be a huge battle where our good guys are together. Like I predicted they would all find themselves together. I actually got something right. And then there's going to be a huge conflict between Thrawn's people, Shin, maybe, maybe not Balin, or Thrawn just leaves. And it's it's Shin and it's Balin and there's our good guys there. And there's kind of that dilemma. I feel like it could go either way. And we see Thrawn just wreaking havoc on the New Republic for an episode. or we see the big conflict, which I think is more likely where they're all fighting together because it would not surprise me at all to see an Ahsoka rematch with Morgan Elsbeth on that ship. Mm. I just don't know how they're going to get to the ship quick enough. I guess they have Ahsoka's ship, right? Hu Yang's still flying it around. Yeah, that's true. So I, I changed my mind. They're going to get on that ship. They're going to go 
onto Theron's ship and fight him there. One cool thing I think we're going to see, and this may be where we were on the same page, but Theron still has Kanan's lightsaber, I believe. That's true. So I think as far as continuity goes, as far as fan service goes, I think it could add a lot to the story if Ezra ends up with that lightsaber at the end of the day and maybe Ahsoka gets left on this planet and when they all leave, maybe Ezra is going to be training Sabine and he's got Kanan's lightsaber doing it. So it goes full circle. Sabine has Ezra's lightsaber. Ezra's using Kanan's to train her and it's it's poetry. It rhymes. That's what George Lucas says. (laughs) I think that could be what we see. But if our good guys are making it back, it almost means Ezra is going to have to ride back on the same ship he came in with, with Thrawn. And I'm just not sure how they're going to work all that out because Thrawn is not losing at the end of this episode. It's going to be a it's going to be a loss for the good guys. And I just I'm not sure how they're going to go about it. And you have to think that anybody that makes it back on Thrawn's ship is not easily getting off of it. Prisoner of war. I fully expect Thrawn to be gone by the end of the episode they'll dock with that giant hyperspace ring and jet out of there he definitely gets out so what if he just leaves the chimera there and and takes that thing back knowing that there's an imperial remnant because he knows about it he has to know and so what if he just does that and then ezra and ahsoka and the whole crew come back in thrawn ship with the pergil just like they ended up getting there that would be pretty cool i could be wrong but i feel like the whole purpose that hyperspace ring though was to dock the chimera right kind of like the jedi start like fires how they docked with those rings that's all i can figure so I don't know. I, I'm kind of leaning towards. I, I do think, hope and think that we see like some big Night Sister magic. Like oh, we that's should, yeah. Part of what's going to stall the heroes getting to the ship is we're going to see something really big and hopefully pretty cool from the the Great Mothers because we haven't seen a lot yet, right? They've done a few little things here and there, but I, I, it would be cool to see some big magic. Yeah force magic come yeah. out of there you know it, it's it's hard to predict because i don't know how how like how operational is thrawn star destroyer right like can they even get ship close to it i think we're going to see more of like them having to fight through i think i think thrawn's only goal is to get back i don't think he cares about losing soldiers so i think he, he does throws not. whatever he needs to to slow them down and so i think we we see them fighting through a lot of that i don't know where to put shin and balin in all this like i i really because <laughs> balin's um. Not interested. Shen, she's she's obviously going to turn tail to wherever she's safe right now. Yeah. Um, so she may try to get back to the Star Destroyer. But at the same time, I don't. She's not going to be very welcome on that Star Destroyer yeah. either. So, gosh, there's a lot. There's a lot of directions I feel like this could go, and it makes it hard to pin down a prediction. But I do think we'll see some big nightmare night night sister magic, and I think maybe our heroes will get left behind. All of them? Maybe so. Yeah. I think it was a lot of effort to bring them together. And so I think with season two, we at least start off with them still together. That would make I sense. I could be wrong. No, that, that makes a and, lot of sense. And you and I had mentioned, I, I think it would be cool if if season two does start after a time jump, right? And we just it, see it almost Ron already to. in the control, New Republic on the brink. Yeah. Because at this point, if that happens and their only way back is the Purgle, the next question is how, how often do the Purgle end their migration route, right? Yeah, is, <laughs> So maybe they have to wait a while before Purgle stop by. That's I mean, I true. don't know. And it probably takes a while to get there. So yeah, that's so true. I, I do think Thrawn's gone. I think we see all our heroes stranded. But man, I do think it would be cool if he ended up with Kanan's lightsaber too. So the only reason I don't, I don't, don't think we see all the heroes stranded is I'm still pretty <laughs> confident we're going to get that scene of Ahsoka with Force Ghost Anakin. Mm. And I think the way they're going to facilitate that is she sacrifices not herself, but she sacrifices going back to get Sabine and Ezra back, and and her and Hu Yang are just hanging out on this planet with Force Ghost Anakin. I think that would be a nice bow to the season, but also set it up, and like you said with the time jump, I think there will be a time jump, but only because we're going to have a season of Mandalorian and also Skeleton Crew carrying this exact same story on, but on the other side you know in the galaxy so it's gonna move forward some and then somehow ahsoka has to get back maybe all the heroes have to get back but i do think they lose 
here. And when they get back, it's like Thrawn has got the upper hand. So they're desperately needed. I also think Shin is going to go back with them because I think it would be very strange for a group of bad guys in Star Wars to be absent a dark side user. (laughs) So I think she's going to be the token dark side user that that the Jedi have to fight against. That may be the case. Because all the rest of them are dead. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so yeah, Palpatine, be he's alive because because Thrawn is uh you know he doesn't trust anybody. I think I think if if he remotely even thought the the great mothers were no longer useful, they they'd already be dead, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, he needs them. I don't think he's gonna need them once he gets back to the galaxy. Yeah, it'll though. be interesting to see what he does with them then. Once he gets his remnant back together, I think you might be right about Morgan though. I think she might she might not make it out of this episode. I Indeed. think she's the type who would sacrifice herself for Thrawn's purposes. It'd be an easy um, casualty too for Ahsoka to finish her off. Maybe since we can maybe think that Ezra and Enoch have some history, right? At this point, maybe maybe Enoch has Kanan's lightsaber. That'd be cool. There's potential. That would be pretty cool if they fight over that. Yeah, they fight. He gets it from him. So because those predictions are. I don't really know why this character is important yet. I mean, he looks really well. Yeah, (laughs) we'll learn in this next episode. I think. Yeah, he'll he'll probably bust some skulls in this next episode. So yeah, that's it. That's our predictions for episode eight. We have we have no clue. (laughs) Yeah, that I think that's the best way to boil it down. Is uh, we're just throwing darts at a dartboard here. We're throwing darts at a dartboard, but I will bank on the Anakin Force Ghost. That's gonna happen. (laughs) That's your that's your definite. I got it. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us we have reached the end of episode seven with the force with friends podcast we appreciate you joining us each and every week next week we'll watch the finale of ahsoka we will break it down and you will have an episode friday morning around 9 a.m as usual and we will also discuss where the podcast is going past ahsoka we're going into new territory we may be stuck going to a new galaxy as well so we will see please don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more star wars content daily if you're enjoying it i would greatly appreciate that and as always may the force be with you